and you have a quorum. Okay, great. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, let's start with our vision and charge. So um, we want to work cooperatively with the town and community to raise awareness and achieve results with a sense of urgency. And I know this is going to change a little bit because we've been working on, well, the town council has been working on the town manager goals for 2023. Um, and Anna, I've been working with Anna as well, giving uh, feedback. We've gone back and forth on email. So I appreciate the emails that were sent by the community uh, to us um, and ECAC as well for sharing uh, goals that need to be there. I think uh, some of them are still being massaged. I don't know if that's been finalized or not. Maybe Anna can talk to that. But uh, I think um, we've included things around our pillars. There are four pillars, so that's uh, that's good news. So our, our pillar, or five pillars. Uh, our five pillars have not changed, so it still um, is the same. In terms of metrics, we are plateauing here in terms of participation in these meetings. I know we have some education series coming up, and uh, um, if you can. Um, send some information out uh, you you create a one slide that you can share with everybody and i would also recommend all your ecac members to share that uh, as well um, to your network we do want to try to increase this participation um we are like i said plateauing we're we're having one two people attend these meetings i would appreciate that um in terms of education series there is one coming up next meeting correct is that right um Lori, is that you or Stella? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Stella, okay. All right. And then no other changes. Stephanie, you have, um, I know we were talking about an expense report on a quarterly basis. Just a heads up, and I don't know if this is something that you can pull together and share information with us every quarter. Um, but yeah, I can try, and I think that might be yeah, I'll have to, I mean, because this is all sort of having a budget is somewhat new, and I don't know, like, in the last couple of years, that's been not specifically, it's kind of been under the department, not necessarily specifically under me, whereas now I do have my own dedicated budget mm -hmm. under sustainability. So I'm not, we'll have to discuss this more. I think we can okay. do this offline. You and I can do this offline. Okay, sounds good. And then um, if anybody else has any action items or or metrics that we want to track here, um, please let me know and I can add it. In terms of open actions, this is complete. I, I, I'm assuming everybody gave feedback to Stephanie and Don. Oh, I can't see. We got some. I wouldn't say everybody, but okay. we got some. Okay. And uh, Don, you're going to have uh, an updated version at the next meeting. Is that right? Don, are you on? Yeah, I will. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then the only action we have pending is to watch the specialized stretch code video for our next meeting. I thought that was for this meeting. No, we just have to watch it for our next meeting. Okay. Uh, anything else for open actions? You, we did meet with the building commissioner to discuss this, and oh. once everyone's read at that, I guess the, the two one meeting, we can I can report back. Okay, sounds good, Jesse. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we are going to switch the agenda around, so let's open it, open it up to the public for any comments. Okay, if there's anyone from the public who would like to speak, please electronically raise your hand. Okay, I'm not seeing any hands raised. Okay. All right, we'll move on to the next part of the agenda then. And we have our guest, Adrian here today, and uh, um, she's gonna share information on the solar survey. So Adrian, if you wanna take over. 
Great, thank you. I'm just gonna share my screen quick. I put together just a couple of um, slides to move us through. It helped me uh, stay on track and make sure we're all looking at the same thing. So we sent you all the um, revised survey. We sent you the first survey back in December, the first iteration. And we got great feedback, so that was really helpful, and I appreciate um, everyone's attentiveness. Um, when we sent you the survey back in December, we really just provided the survey, the questions themselves. Um, and I wanted to take a moment to step back um, and just put it in kind of in context. Um, Stephanie and I have been working closely to develop a really robust outreach strategy. Um, and this process of inform to consult, involve, and ultimately collaborate with the community um, should look familiar from the CARP. Um, so the survey is one component under the consult category, but the survey will be hosted online from a project website. And so that project website will include a lot more information about why we're doing this, who's doing it. Um, about you guys, about the solar bylaw group, um, and then about, you know, how this may be used moving forward by the town. Um, we're also going to link to the town website and we'll have email blasts to the community to let them know about the survey, let them know about the projects. We're working with um, the town to, you know, put this on so their social media and traditional media, you know, the, the town reminder. We're going to be doing some targeted flyer posting um, about the survey and about the workshops. Um, and we'll have an informational public meeting. And so all of that under the inform column will be going on prior to and during the survey window and then also afterwards. Um, we are going to be using Engage Amherst Forum um, to ask additional questions and, and drive additional public participation. Um, and then obviously we have the survey itself. And we'll be hosting two interactive workshops um, where members of the public can drop in and participate. Um, these are being specifically designed to be um, you drop in sessions so people can come with the time they have um, and they're not going to be you know an intimidating stand up in front of everyone and voice what you think but a series of interactive activities um, hosted on evenings and weekends to again hopefully drive robust public participation um, and then all of the information gathered throughout this process will be shared back to you back to the town it will be hosted on the town website um, and hopefully it'll it'll serve as a as a jumping off point for continued public participation um, surrounding solar and other climate initiatives in town. So I just wanted to to make sure we all were thinking about this survey because we got a lot of really great feedback and a lot of it had to do with more information. Um, and we are incorporating more information. Um, but some of it's on other avenues than the survey itself. Um, so the status right now, obviously, um, this week with you today, and then on Friday with the Solar Bylaw Working Group, we'll be discussing the revised questions. Um, moving forward, we're going to finalize the questions. We are going to translate them into Spanish and Cantonese. And then we'll be um, populating and testing out the actual survey interface instead of just questions in a Word document um, with a goal of opening the survey to the public in February. Um, so any questions here on the kind of the process and timeline before we get into the questions themselves? Okay, hearing none. Um, so we got feedback, like I said, from, from you guys, the solar bylaw group and the department heads. Um, and so we were able to implement, I think, quite a bit of feedback um, from a high level feedback we put into the survey itself. 
included a much more robust introduction, um, more context around specific questions, why we were asking that or what we were trying to drive at with each question, um, the use of images to help people contextualize, you know, ground mount and other types of solar. And then we also included some demographic questions. Um, other feedback that we received that'll be going on the project website is um, again, a, a lot more of the overall ecosystem. So linking to the climate road map, linking to the Amherst car, pointing people to mass save, um, that will be on the project website itself where they will launch the survey. Um, and then information on the upcoming workshops, that'll be heavily publicized. Um, and some additional information on how we're gonna use the, the survey results. Um, I, we also received several requests for open-ended questions, you know, tell us more or, you know, what do you think type of questions. And um, after really thinking about that, we think the best place for those questions is in, on the Engage Amherst forum. Uh, people can write out their answers, post them, and other users can, you know, like them, can respond, and that will allow for more conversation. Um, as when people answer the surveys, we feel really strongly that every answer should have a use, and I just worry that, you know, we're trying to get a, drive a lot of public participation. And if we get a lot of open-ended ended answers, it's challenging to use that data meaningfully. And I think that on Engage Amherst and then also in our workshops, we'll be able to use that type of information in a much more meaningful and proactive manner. Um, so if you were hoping to see a question on the survey that was more just open text box answer and you didn't, it's going to be on that Engage Amherst forum. Um, so those, those were kind of the largest changes. Obviously there were also some text changes, um, some language clarifications, um, but this is kind of the major, the major shifts that occurred. Um, are there questions or comments on, on the revisions so far and, and what else you'd like to see? Hey Adrian, are you going to get into detail around work the workshop would entail? What does that cover at a high level? Yeah, the, the workshop is going to include um, more questions on um, community values, people being able to voice in different ways where they would like to see solar, where they wouldn't like to see solar. Um, what types of community or town led solar efforts they would like to see. Um, and so Stephanie and I have been working to come up with activities on that that are uh, going to be meaningful, provide meaningful results, but also will allow for participation um, of non-English speakers and um, other members. So it'll it'll probably be a series of you know tables or booths with different voting mechanisms and comment mechanisms, um, as well as hopefully um, some online interaction that we can see in real time. Got it. Yeah, I asked because you mentioned that you plan on having two workshops, right? Yes. I, I was wondering if it makes sense to have it on either side of the survey, that it's more educational, people know what it's about versus not knowing anything about solar and then you're answering the survey. Would that help having it in between I mean, the survey sandwich between two workshops? Yep, so I think our, our plan right now is to have, um, we're gonna have an informational meeting and that will be more of a, you know, we'll give a presentation, it's open to everyone. And then the survey will become live after that. Um, and we're looking to front load the workshops in the survey window. So hopefully people have come to the presentation and or a workshop and then get you know those reminders to fill out the survey okay thank you mm -hmm. oh um Steve, yes, Steve. I see. yeah 
Um, th this looks great. I've, I've read it over and um, I think the, the, the presentation and some of the background information and the questions have all improved quite nicely since the last version that I saw uh, back in December. So good. This I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. I have little nitpicky things in the document that I'll forward along to you. Um, just basically small wording suggestions. Um, but overall, it looks fine um, to me. The I guess the one question I have um, on the demographics, that'll be an optional section. I presume people don't have to answer that. Um, how do we in, in surveys like this and community surveys this must be kind of a common problem how do you know if you're getting good representation across the town um, from the different demographic groups that you're hoping to reach out to yes that is certainly a challenge I mean hopefully people will fill out the demographics so we'll see We'll see some of that. Um, we are working with Amherst DEI coordinators and we are working with other um, groups in town to specifically reach out to audiences that um, participate less often. Um, so we are planning additional outreach to those groups and um, like I said, the the workshops are going to be, you know, we're we're planning right now an evening one and a weekend one, so that people don't necessarily need to arrange childcare, you know, or take time off work. Um, they can bring their kids. There'll be some some activities for the kids, um, and so we're trying to make it very easy for people to participate. But unfortunately, we don't have a way to ensure. Yes, I know. I, well, I, I appreciate those sort of proactive efforts that you're going to be making, and I think those are important and sound like they're well thought out. Is there a mechanism that you have sort of after the fact to sort of validate that the survey did in fact reach uh, the goals for, um, for a representative um, sampling of the town population? Unfortunately, we, we, we don't. Um... We are, you know, we did make the choice to make the survey anonymous and not ask people for their name or their address or anything um, because we thought that might be a hurdle for some people to answer, but it does limit our kind of data analytics on the back end of who answered. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. Absolutely, thank you. Laura? Great, thanks. Um, yeah, agree with agree with a lot of the points that um, Steve made. I think the survey looks great. Um, I think I really appreciate the additional information at the top of the survey related to the goals of the climate goals of the town. Um, one additional thing you could potentially add to the demographics would just be like what district the person is in in Amherst. Um, uh, the only question I had is about the timeline. Um, you said that you were going to close the survey in mid -fe or late February, end of February. Yep, our hopes have the survey open for about a month. Okay, and do you have a sense of how long it'll take to like process the data? We are giving ourselves about another month. It takes it always takes a little bit longer. Uh, <laughs> than one hopes to, to really get meaning from the data. Um, all of this information, the survey results themselves, as well as our analysis of them, um, it's all going to be compiled and reported back. Um, and right now we have a target deadline of the full report um, at the end of April. Okay. But um, as other pieces become available and, and we're ready to share them, um, we would like to provide information to you in a timely manner as, as we can. Okay. Yeah, I, I just asked because I know, I believe the requirement of the working group, right, is to get a bylaw done by the end of May. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Um, okay. So I just want to make sure that we're being clear on that timeline because I what I don't want to have happen is 
folks feel like they spent time coming to these filling out the survey or coming to the workshop and then that didn't get integrated into any of the thinking regarding the bylaw. I know some of this is a little bit different, but um, we should also be communicating that clearly as well. Yes. Yep. It's all going to be um, done in in April and provided as a final final document and final results um, in April. So the solar bylaw group has time. Lori and then Stephanie. So I just heard two different timeline things. So I wanted to ask about timeline again. Does the survey open mid February or close mid February? The survey is going to open in early February and our, okay. so and our, our hopes, later. yeah, open the survey in February, have our um, presentation and our workshops in early and mid February, and then have a few more weeks for people to answer the survey after we've had those in person workshops. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Stephanie? Is it okay if I go, Vasu? Yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Vasu. I can't hear Vasu. Stephanie, I think you froze up there for a moment. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, Sorry, so I just um, wanted to say that the um, the deadline for the solar bylaw working group, while it's stated, is not inflexible. So if the solar bylaw working group feels that they need more time, they can request that from the town manager and town council. So, I mean, there is, you know, there's certainly a goal, but it's not hard and fast so that if they need more time, they are allowed more time. It's not unprecedented. So I just wanted to make sure people were aware. Dwayne, would it be a, would that be a concern in extending the timeline if we get this data analytics completed in April? Um, no, I mean that's that's that would be in time. To, you know, we're going to be putting together the solar bylaw. Even if we have we stick with that deadline. You know the intent is really to have an iterative process so we a lot of it is uh just pulling the language and, and outline and skeleton together but then um re, re going through another iteration of of uh fine tuning uh and tuning the the uh the bylaw with uh um input from from uh from the survey work um and and, and meeting work um would be could be done later in the process uh, but um, uh, as Stephanie suggests, um, you know, to the extent that there's a lot to consider, uh, then um, you know, extending the deadline is um, is is seems doable. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Ben. Okay. Um, are there any other? Any other questions? I, I, I have one. If thinking about deadlines and when these deliverables are going to get to the solar bylaw working group to be using them, what's the planned um, timeline for delivering the solar assessment that your firm is doing? Yes. So we've been working on the solar assessment. We have a kind of a smaller working group that's been making decisions about that. And Again, the final, you know, the final version of that is we're aiming to have everything due, done to the town by the end of April. Um, but I do believe there'll be an iteration of that done um, sooner for review. Um, I know our GIS specialist has been working diligently on it. It looks like there are no other questions, Adrian. Okay, well, I really appreciate your time and I appreciate the feedback we received. I think it, it really improved the survey and um, I look forward to continuing to work with you all to get 
some hopefully great answers, a lot of answers. Um, it's always our goal. Dwayne, I just ask, yeah, um, uh, and Adrian, thank thank you for this, and look forward to a similar conversation with the uh, bylaw group. Um, I guess maybe this is more of a question for Stephanie, but what is the to get um, comments and updates or or edits? As Steve suggests, I have a few, not worth taking up time now. Um, back to um, to you, I presume, Stephanie. What what would what's your preference in terms of just each of us? Uh, sending those in separately to you? Yeah, I think just send them to me and then I'll, um, I try to compile them and get them to Adrian. If they're lengthier, I will send them individually, but if it's just a few comments and you can both get them to me sooner than later, I can send them together to her. So I would say, you know, if you have comments, certainly by the end of this week would be helpful. Well, thank you. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, move on to voting on the minutes from the last meeting. Any questions or comments on the minutes? I move we accept them as they are. Oh, looks like Jesse has a. <laughs> I move we accept them as they are. Second. Thank you. Okay, and voting by voice vote in no particular order. Raghavan? Yes. Goldner? Yes. Gregor? Yes. Roof? Yes. Allison? All right. Yes. D? Yes. Selman? Yes. Rose? Yes. Drucker. Uh, abstain, please. Okay. Minutes are approved. All right, great. Let's uh, continue talking about solar. And uh, over to you, Duane. Great. Uh, thanks, Vasu. Uh, thanks, all. Um, I think um, Stephanie did email out what I've um, what I've progressed to at this point uh, with regard to the solar assessment tool, um, solar, and I, I'm not sure if I, we can sort of decide on what the name of this thing is because it needs to be very carefully um, understood to be a separate exercise than the solar um, assessment as it's being referred to with regard to uh, just geographically what, um, uh, where solar might go and, and conditions and, and, and technical sort of potential for solar uh, around Massachusetts. This is really a different exercise uh, to help ourselves um, and for ourselves, ultimately, I'm not, I'm not suggesting we're ready to do that today, uh, but ultimately to make um, uh, some recommendations from ECAC, uh, but for others uh, constituents to use this tool to be able to better understand um, and the scale of solar development that um, might be appropriate for um, Amherst to host um, in, in, in ways that are aligned with um, our goals, uh, the, ECAC, the ECAC and the town goals uh, for climate reduction, as well as the Commonwealth's. Uh, so it really is a different um, exercise um, and, and should be uh, carefully described in that way. Um, what I progressed uh, so far for today, um, uh, I'll mention what I have done, then we can go over that, but I'll also stress what I have not done yet. Um, what I've done is provided a, a um, draft um, uh, introductory sheet um, for this tool to describe uh, sort of its purpose. Um, I also included there um, an, an updated um, um, inventory and analysis of, of how much solar we currently have in Amherst, uh, and then uh, sort of describe the methods, uh, the three methods that we've come up with to um, perform this um, site, this uh, hosting analysis or assessment. <clears throat> um, so um, 
welcome any comments on that. I think I, I will go through um, some interesting findings. And is it helpful for me to share my screen, I guess, at this point? Um, uh, what I thought it'd be, uh, uh, certainly, certainly I'd appreciate um, any thoughts or comments on the on on text here, um, but um, what I thought I would do is is uh, for ourselves um, uh, introduce what I what I what I did here in terms of the um, inventory or or what we currently have installed in Amherst uh, solar installations in Amherst and some some uh, takeaways from that. Um, again, this is um, for the for town wide. Uh, but without the university and the colleges. Um, and um, over the course of the three solar programs in Massachusetts, I suspect there was a, a few kilowatts installed even before them, but we'll forget about those because uh, there's not real good records on that. Uh, but we, what we have here is um, sort of where we stand currently uh, from using the databases that DOER has on approved projects in SREC 1, SREC 2, and the SMART program. And I decided to sort of categorize them by uh, commercial projects. Uh, uh, these include, the, these include uh, um, uh, commercial buildings, retail, um, and, and so forth, um, residential, which includes, and, and the different programs databases don't necessarily parse these out exactly the same, um, but residential includes uh, certainly all the um, single family residential solar projects, but also uh, the residential projects that serve um, how DOER uh, categorizes them uh, for, I think, uh, four or more dwelling units. Um, in total, th that, that's a, a small minority of the total residential. Uh, I also divided out the solar projects that are um, not necessarily owned, but controlled and, and cited by the town. Uh, and then uh, what's categorized as agriculture. A uh, couple takeaways from here is that um, there's um, 860, was it 870 projects uh, installed in Massachusetts. Um, most of those are, uh, are residential um, and that am amounts to um, uh, uh, about seven and a half megawatts um, out of the total that we have installed of about 28 megawatts. Uh, so residential is, is uh, um, particularly in the SREC programs, less so in the SMART program, but um, the, uh, the residential projects are important contributions to our solar mix. Uh, but may maybe the key takeaway is that of the 28 megawatts, or a key takeaway is that of the 28 megawatts that we have installed, 20 megawatts, 70%, uh, is four projects. Uh, the four large ground-mounted projects we have in, in Amherst, the two um, town projects, uh, recognizing that uh, this includes the Hickory Ridge project, which is not built yet, but anticipated and, and approved um, uh, for, the, for, the, uh, for the program and, and it seems to be going, going forward, um, as well as the two large, um, uh, 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 two large total of 10 megawatts, um, large ground mounted projects in North Amherst. Um, and so um, four projects, 70% of our installation. Um, so the, the, you know, the ground mounted uh, ones um, and, uh, and relatively little impact on agriculture at this point. Uh, so those were some key, key takeaways there. I, I will say the Colleges, uh, universities uh, add another 12 megawatts or so, 13 megawatts. Uh, but again, we're sort of removing those because um, we're also in this assessment not including um, their load, <laughs> the load of the university and the colleges, the electric electricity load, uh, nor recognizing that um, similar to um, the town, each of those institutions have their own uh, somewhat independent Clean, uh, clean energy and climate plan and energy transition underway. Um, so that's that. Uh, what I, what I, I'll, I'll state what I have not done yet, 
Um, and what we what we 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 collectively are tasked with. Um, uh, what I have not done yet is um, really updated what we saw last time. Uh, this sheet, uh, which I think I got some feedback on, uh, which I have not updated yet, but I will do so. Um, I think this remains generally intact, um, but um, uh, but but um, what I'm what I what what I'd like to get to uh, through some conversation with with ECAC is sort of e you know to to um, while, while this tool is to be used and able to be used by um, constituents and 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 uh, and anybody um, what we would like to put forward I believe as ECAC is our best um, best uh, set of assumptions uh, inputs and assumptions. Uh, and our own um, recommendations on on uh, the scale uh, or the range, I should say, of solar uh, that we should strive to um, host in Amherst, uh, based on um, sort of our uh, sort of a, a perspective of what is our fair share, if you will, um, of, uh, of of solar uh, as a as a member of the of the of the comp as a participant in the Commonwealth of our own. Uh, goals and commitments, as well as um, being um, a part of the Commonwealth. Uh, if you do recall, these uh, these these are the the uh, the inputs that we we um, uh, sort of I, I put out there as as base cases as as uh, uh, initial uh, for discussion. Um, and then uh, do keep in mind we do have these in this graphical result, uh, which um, comes from that that previous. Uh, set of assessments, looking at the three methods. Um, and um, I, I'm not suggesting at all that this is the end, the, 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 the end uh, uh, result, uh, because we want to collectively agree on uh, inputs and assumptions. Uh, and then you and then um, look at what this um, graphic looks like, and then um, make some, if we want, uh, ECAC recommendations on Sort of a, a low and high or range of solar hosting that we should, uh, as a town, um, strive for, um, and then look at, and then separately as a separate exercise, you know, how does that, how does that merge with the technical assessment um, that um, that is ongoing um, and will be available um, in in a few months as well. Uh, so when let me, Jesse had a question. Yeah. So let me um, pause there and and. Uh, see what people have to say yep first of all as always i love it i love spreadsheets um i think even at this juncture it would be super helpful to overlay this information on the existing capacity information and just add a fourth um bar that maybe goes that shows the range and so then just graphically get a gut sense of where we stand. I think that one move would would make this this piece of work very um just sort of gut useful for me. You're saying in this graphic, Jesse, that's up here now? E well, I actually think in the first one, if you go to this guy, if if we had like a you know, low end, <laughs> high end. I don't know if you can see my annotation. Just show. Well, oh, I see. You know, put contextual. These two things want to be contextualized together. I would think. Yeah, the other way I was thinking of doing it would would be on this graph uh, to have some sort of bar here saying, uh, you know, if we're at if we're at um, uh, twenty eight, we'd have a line here saying, you know. I'm not sure if you can see my cursor, and I can't draw a line like you can, you can Jesse. Um, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yep. Would be I, have I, a think, yeah. I think that would help too. I, I, my sense is that intuitively, a vertical, that vertical bar graph, for more humans, they kind of, it's like this building is taller than this building. I, I think it's a more intuitive way to see data. Yeah, I'd put it on both. Yeah, I could put it on both. The, the issue here is that the, these, the, uh, to do that comparison, I'd have to stack 
maybe a different graph, but have these stacked up on top of each other um, to get the full height to 28 megawatts. Is something uh, like something to put both categories yeah. together is my yeah. yep. raw, however you see fit. Otherwise, beautiful. okay. All right, Laura. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Duane, as always. Um, something that's coming to mind to me as I look at this is. <clears throat> And thinking about what ECAC's recommendation should be, I, I'm coming back to like, I feel like we should be making a recommendation that allows us to meet the climate goals that the town has set. Like that feels to be in line with our charge. <clears throat> and anything we recommend less than that seems to be inappropriate to me. And so just looking back to the CARP, right? The CARP says, <clears throat> for Amherst to achieve its climate goals, nearly all energy consumed locally will need to become come from ecologically sustainable and renewable sources. So I, I, while I recognize sort of some of the nuances with that, like I, I think that we should be putting forward our recommendations that meet that goal. So I don't know if that's the 92 there um, or at, at a minimum. And, and then I think there's this question of, we've talked about in the past, whether we should do more because we have more land or not. I mean, I think that's a reasonable discussion to have, but um, at, a, at a minimum, we should not be suggesting a number that's less than what will allow us as a town of Amherst to meet our cl the climate goals that the town has set. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, and I think that's a, a, a good thing for us to think about. I guess where where the rubber heat hits the road, I guess, in making that in in considering that is that um, you know, we it, it's pretty clear and a good thing that we don't the Commonwealth is gonna is expecting to receive a lot of uh its renewable energy from generation that's not actually located in on the land of Massachusetts. Uh, there's a dominant amount uh, from offshore wind, which great thing. It doesn't take up any anybody's backyard at all. Um, and then large scale hydro is still expected. And that's um, in, in somebody else's backyard, but still a, 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 um, an attractive resource. Um, and so it, it, it but I, I like you know that that sort of lends itself to this method one, which is like, okay, how much electricity do are we expecting to consume in Massachusetts by 2050? Uh, the I, you know, in the in the suggest in the uh, suggestion here, it's like, okay, we're going to pretty much hold steady on our uh, energy use. Uh, we're going to grow some, but energy efficiency will 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 help uh, reduce load growth. Uh, but at the same time, we're going to transition all of our transportation and heating to electricity. So that's going to D double or more uh, our um, our electricity use, um, uh, so that sort of gets us to that point. But then we make you know this assumption right here is basically okay. Uh, how much of this electricity um, that we need uh, are we going to assume or or suggest should come from solar? Uh, uh, not just solar anywhere, but solar in 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 located in Amherst. Um, and I think the I have to check, but I think these numbers are somewhat aligned with, you know, the or at least the twenty five percent, maybe thirty percent. Uh, I don't have that number on 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 top of me, but is you know roughly un, aligned with you know how much, what percentage of the total renewable energy generation is expected to come from solar. Um, as opposed to uh, the other resources. So that's, I, I like that approach, Laura, but it, it comes down to sort of that question, that assumption, I guess, um, about how much of our renewable, of our energy, which needs to be all renewable, comes from solar in Amherst. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point to weigh in. And then I think that's where these other, 
um, methods come up, right? Like if we're going to, if we're, if we're going to say we can't have our cake and eat it too, we can't say that we're going to benefit from all of the hydro and wind energy that's coming from other locations, but then not do our fair share of land-based solar. Um, so I do think that that lends itself to saying, you know, it's some com it's some some range between sort of meeting our needs with a higher amount of solar and doing our share of the land-based solar um, because we have the land and others don't. Mm -hmm. Yes, Stephanie and Steve. Thanks, Fasu. Um, so Duane, I have two questions. Um, the first is, do you think this will be complete by the time we do the outreach to the community for the community survey? Um, uh, well, it's somewhat, yeah, yeah uh, well, if that's, if that's really helpful, then we can work towards that. I guess um, I'm thinking about the workshop specifically, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Where, where something along these lines could be presented and, and the tool could actually be put online as well uh, as part of the, the, the online uh, resources. Um, I guess I would say that, um, uh, I mean, the tool is generally ready. I think there's some formatting and stuff I'd like to do and so forth, but, uh, and, and also to double check some of the um, citations and and uh, that I got the numbers right from the citations. Uh, but I guess what's what is um, um, is more time consuming and 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 needs to happen is more for this body to um, come to consensus um, on the assumptions uh, and this the 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 inputs that we want to use for these three methods as our um, best uh, offering uh, going through this analysis and then and then um, uh, coming up with those those recommendations that fall from that. Um, so that that was the first question. Yeah. Okay. The second the second follow up question. Well, it's maybe more of a statement than a question. As I'm thinking about the workshops and I'm thinking about the accessibility of information, and um, this is very incredibly academic, which is fine for this group, but certainly I think we need to have this level of analysis. I think though that if we could have a summary for the workshops that really just sort of takes everything and makes it very digestible and very simple language for people. So they don't need to be looking at all the charts, but even, or maybe just one final graphic that really kind of lays it out, maybe that like one of those two graphics um, with just a quick little summary at the end so that people can really, everybody can sort of be more able to understand what it is we came out with. I think that will be really helpful. Yep, absolutely. Yep, I think that's a, a um, important um, outcome as well. Steve? Um, let me just, uh, sorry, before we go on from that, just in terms of the timetable, the, the remind me what Adrian said about the workshop schedules. Um, so I think the workshops are um, targeted for February. Yeah, that's so. what I'm, I'm thinking. I mean, I, I don't know if we're ready to do it today. And I'm, I, I, I will admit I'm not really ready to lead, lead a discussion on these inputs and assumptions um, uh, and, and, and work together as in a, in a, in this, in this, in one of these meetings to, you know, I, I think go, number by number, um, or at least the main ones, uh, to come to some uh, group decision on that. Uh, maybe it's something, I, you know, I'd be happy to, um, uh, even though it's out of order, if, if, if the agenda permits to do it again next time uh, with with uh, folks having more time to look at these um, sure. before before the meeting, the next meeting, and then try to hone down on that and, and uh, 
come to some some uh, conclusion. Yeah, so what would be the ask, Dwayne? Would it just be to review this information? Uh, you're going to see everybody raising their hands. So um, let me hold that thought. Let me go to Steve first and then Andra. Um, so one, I guess I wanted to make one thing, make sure I have an understanding is clear. All of this analysis here is assuming that hydro and offshore wind are a large fraction as dictated by the roadmap. And we are just taking what's in the roadmap and looking at the solar share and putting that, mapping that as a, you know, in the context of Amherst's responsibility. So we're not trying to do all of our electricity in Amherst from solar in Amherst. That's right. Correct. Um, yeah. And, and, and at least in the, um, uh, what is it in, in uh, method two of the solar capacity to meet the share of the statewide solar uh, ex expected capacity? That's in the um, what do they call it? Like sort of the baseline right. uh, road 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 ahead, uh, which assumes decent chunks and of, of the offshore wind and the and the. Um, Large scale hydro. There was another scenario or number of other roads to get to this endpoint, where um, what was it? Uh, large scale hydro didn't come through, or offshore wind was was much less than expected, and the amount of solar substantially um, increased to cover the difference, <coughs> and that would obviously um, we, we the town would have to sort of be um, sensitive to you know. It, it, um, to to uh, diverting from the, from their own road uh, in that case as well. Yeah, I just good. I uh, thank you. I, I wanted to make sure that people that might be listening in didn't get the impression that we are advocating that Amherst in the future have enough solar to create all of the electricity that we use. No. We're just looking at the share of solar that's dictated by the Massachusetts plan and mapping that to our town based on different approaches like population or land area. Um, what I would, what I guess I'd like to do is, as you said, have another go at this where we agree sort of box by box on the different inputs. And then I think we should write up a report, a short summary that explains the different methods and, and documents where in these different reports we're getting these different numbers. And that report we <coughs> uh, agree on, come to agreement on the language of it and the uh, recommendations. And then that gets sent to our superiors, a town manager, um, and presumably would be then relayed to other um, portions of the town. And perhaps at the same time, we could also write a condensed version of it that would be appropriate for um, public consumption, public presentation at the, the sessions in February. So we, we don't have a lot of time to do that. This would sort of mean we would need to, at our next meeting in two weeks, come to an agreement on these numbers, and then someone would have to write up a report, and we would then... That would that would put us yeah then we'd have a presumably have to agree to that report that would put us in the middle of February if it if it's um, two meetings from now so we a little worried about the timeline there yeah Steve I think we have some time now so we should be talking about okay it now. okay yeah, yeah great let suggestion me, let's let's yeah, let me let me just ask uh, Stephanie on that uh, I mean in order to put something in front of the town. Um, in in front of this um, work, uh, the the, the um, community forums that um, are going to go forward. Would would we need to have something, uh, the report written ahead of that to be approved by the town manager, um, um, or or could we? Because uh, I think the report writing is is a little bit it will be time consuming. Um, or could we put together a condensed version? I I, I saw um, Jesse hold up one finger, like one slide, um, to um, present 
present these out these uh, this analysis and outcomes to the community um, before the you know maybe with the the manager's town manager's blessing, but not necessarily approval of a of a full scale report. So I think what you, uh, um, yeah, I mean you don't need a full scale report, obviously. And I think what you could do is have a summary of kind of the, all the decided upon, um, you know, once you all as a committee decide upon um, what you're looking at as the sort of recommendations, um, you could summarize those and maybe get, have the town manager review those. And then that can be, um, you know, the report can come later, but if you sort of have agreement on like, those are your recommendations. And again, I do wanna say that you're a committee and these are your recommendations. So I don't think you're asking the town manager to look at this and say, yes, okay, that's right. I mean, <laughs> I don't think he can. And I think it's just, these are your recommendations as a committee. So I don't know that it has to get um, necessarily approved at that level at this point when you're just talking about what you all are recommending and so that people can consider your recommendations as they're sort of mulling over what they, you know, understand to be what the town should be striving for or needing to do. Andra. I have two thoughts to complicate this already really complicated matter. Um, this, the, the solar bylaw, from my understanding, is about solar siting. That's all. It's not gonna set our goals for how much solar should be um, how much how many how much of the green attributes of solar should be owned by hammers, which is yeah and and yeah and a small fraction of what is currently installed is quote unquote owned by Amherst. Yeah, yeah. I mean, constituents within Amherst, yeah. Or anyone in Amherst, exactly. So I, I just want to um, remind and, and somehow reinforce, this is only about siting. And we have a very important decision to make as the, you know, in, in terms of what recommendation we, we will make um, about how much solar we should own. Um, and in meaning owning the green attributes as well, the, the recs um, and, and other recs. You can own wind recs too, but it's, it's thorny. There's not a clear um, way that that I can think of that makes sense, <laughs> um, certainly financially, and yet I don't want to lose sight of that really critical question that um, I know is also really important for um, our CCA to be clear on um, what do we count? What can we take credit for? So for me, this citing decision is about our, you know, whatever's the, our fair share of, of, land um, of, you know, of, of the physical, not just land, but the, the physical 
possibilities for siting solar. Um, and enough. Uh, then the, the other thing that keeps coming up for me is that um, we aren't doing this in a vacuum. And, you know, others have made the point that Amherst can't, you know, be this microcosm and, and balance everything out um, within our borders. Um, and once we actually get um, our electric aggregation going, it, it makes no sense anymore to think of just Amherst. We should be thinking about Pelham, Amherst, and Northampton, um, which will take some coming together in terms of the other municipalities and our goals and capacity. So um, I don't know at what point we should start thinking about that, but it, it it'd be better to think about it sooner than later and at least have a mention of this um, expanding our model for, um, of course, we have to have a bylaw at the municipal level, but a solar goal could be at the, at least, you know, three towns initially level. Um, and hopefully our aggregation will grow and include more municipalities. So I want to push that out there. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. Uh, Laura? Um, yeah, thanks. I've already spoken, so I don't have, well, I'll just go anyway. Um, so two things. One is, Dwayne, I'd be happy to work with you to try to think through how we can communicate this in ways that may be more accessible. Like one of the things I just, calculation I just did quickly was, you know, we have 600 and 6,600 residential par parcels in the in Amherst. So that means we roughly have 12.6% of residential solar, um, which, and like this average in the U S is 8%. And, you know, we could look and see what the average in, in Massachusetts is just to give people a sense of where we are on the scale of some of these things. Um, Andra, I do agree with you that this should don't, that this should be about citing. So that makes me wonder why we like, I guess I'm just trying to think if we can, if we could possibly narrow the discussion at all already. Like, do folks think we should do method three or method two? Like, I, I'm just trying to think through what, and maybe Vasu, I'll turn it back to you. Like, what is a logical way to like maybe rank choice vote these methods? Like my, my suggestion would be, we don't go below what we need like we I think we have to find a base number for which we can't go below because it won't allow us to meet our goals. And then we need to set the high number based on either method two or three. Um, so I, I just wanted to see if we can potentially move the conversation forward a little bit in in some way. Yeah, and let me just um I guess um feedback on that. I I, I don't think the intent was to decide uh, that one method was the preferred method to another uh, or that one one method that we should choose one method or even rank them necessarily it was it was really to to allow for um, coming at the same question from different perspectives and different methods and seeing how if the results, come out um, with similar or overlapping ranges of solar to host um, um, then that's even you know more um, persuade persuasiveness that 
um, you know, uh, setting a high and a, a low and a high um, uh, capacity to, to host an Amherst makes makes uh, um, makes sense and, and it could could reach some sort of consensus, not only amongst us, but but uh, but but others. Um, but I do like your point with regard to, you know, at a minimum, we should make sure that we meet our goals. Uh, but again, uh, you know, if, you know, uh, it, um, it, 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 it somewhat, this question of, of, you know, how, how much, um, how much, you know, solar is not the only thing out there. <laughs> uh, it's, it's one component, how much, how much solar, uh, should contribute to that, to our electricity needs, um, is um uh is it is sort of needs to be assumed i guess at this point um uh yeah yeah but Dwayne, let's come back to that Let, yeah. oh sorry, sorry go ahead. Right. question isn't that already built in though to method two and three because those include those are shares of solar capacity i mean built into it's 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 baked into all three methods really but like the share of solar capacity to meet statewide projections is taking into account that it's statewide is also including hydro, wind. Exactly, and exactly. Yeah, good point. In, in this method too, uh, specifically, uh, it looks at, okay, the, the Commonwealth as a whole in its base case assumes that 25 to 35 gigawatts of solar is gonna be needed to meet our mix. And we just take a share of that uh, based on either population or land or some some some, some something in between. Um, whereas the first method is really more about um, meeting our own needs for our own electricity, but making an assumption that a certain percentage of that comes from not only solar, but solar located in Amherst. So they do, they do tie together. Laurie? Yeah, so that's one of the things, one of the points I wanted to make is that all of these, I don't, I wouldn't want to see us trying to choose between these. I think what we should be doing is simply trying to summarize each of them in, you know, the simplest possible way um, and present the numbers and then come up with a record, maybe perhaps a recommendation. So for example, if we did a little more than twice what we currently have, we would be within the range of all of these. So we could say that at a minimum, you know, ECAC would ask that we provide at least, you know, the 63 or 60 some odd you know, something that falls within the bottom of all of these methods. Um, yeah, so 63 would be the highest minimum. And I think the numbers that you're using, you know, if, if you're asking um, Dwayne for us to discuss whether the numbers you're using are reasonable, I don't particularly feel a need to discuss that. I think as long as you tell us what they are, they're all fine. And uh, I think the exemptions are all reasonable. I think this is a very nicely done Analysis. I have one question about one of them. Um, the method three, solar capacity to meet share of statewide land-based solar. And I would I would make one change to the titles here. Uh, going back to method one for a moment, solar capacity to meet Amherst electric needs. The title makes it sound like <clears throat> this is the total. We're, we're going to go 100% solar, and it will meet Amherst needs. I think to meet a fair share of Amherst electric needs would be a better way to phrase that. And the same thing with uh, method two, solar capacity to meet a fair share, or fair share is what we're discussing here. What is our fair share? Um, and with method three, solar capacity to meet a fair share of statewide, statewide land-based solar. Now for that one, I don't quite understand this because, okay, so you're giving in the line 26 there, um, it's off the bottom of the screen, but I'm looking at it in the Excel spreadsheet. So the Commonwealth projected ground mounted solar land use, uh, somewhere between 35,000 and 100,000, we're 0.289% of the land area. And then you make some other assumptions about how, how efficient the solar is. Um, and I would have thought that would be enough to come up with the solar capacity, but I don't understand what this line 29 is, percent of solar capacity that is assumed to be ground mounted. I thought all of this was ground mounted that the yeah 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 a good point it, it it's <laughs> um, hard to explain especially to um the general masses i would i would certainly say but uh the the um the issue here is i wanted these three methods to um compare apples to apples uh and this method three uh really was an orange instead 
uh, at least starting from the state state information. Yeah. Uh, they're assuming that of all the so just a portion of this uh, of the of the uh, probably of the 25 to 35 gigawatts of solar that they expect um, that um, the portion of that um, that that I, I don't think they express that in megawatts. Uh, but the the portion of that that's ground mounted would take up 35 well take up uh, nine, uh 31 to 158 or something um in the notes there um acres of land in Massachusetts uh but that's not all solar that's just the land 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 ground mounted solar so in order to to say okay well that's you know if we're going to take a fair share of the of the of that of our land for ground mounted um that the total solar that we're uh wanting to get in 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 uh, Amherst um rec would need to recognize that we're also going to get solar from non ground mounted right okay, okay so the 60% and 40% are just thrown in there so people realize we're not planning on doing all ground mounted yeah, um, it's yeah. not. Pro it's probably not used in the number at the bottom, right? It says solar capacity needed. No, right? it is. It is. Yep, it is. It's multiplied or divided. I'm not sure. I'd have to think that through. Uh, well, then maybe we, we should probably talk about this offline then, because I'm not sure I understand that calculation. Yeah. Um, the others I think are pretty straightforward, but that one I don't quite get. Um, yeah. So, and I'm also happy. I wanted to throw my hat in there as well. Uh, it might actually do me some good to try to summarize this so that I make sure I understand it. So, if you want some help writing a you know a simple executive summary or something like that for folks okay. to read and do note this I, I attempted that a little bit here uh, maybe yeah. it's more but I guess I didn't scroll down here I do give uh, um, explanations of the three methods ah there it is yeah yeah and and but also including the uh, high and low what what the outcome was for each well no there there this was really just about the methods uh, right. I in this sheet um, I'm not sure about in the notes or somewhere. Um, I think to, to, to sort of make this public, we'll, we'll want to um, have these assumptions. And then uh, well, I do a little bit in, in these notes, but a little bit more to say, okay, to, to explain um, not only the site, citing of those um, uh, inputs, um, some of them are inputs, meaning they come from um, particularly the 20, the state 2050 decarbonization roadmap or some of the other right. uh, detailed documents um, where I yeah. just, I think it's important to cite those, but it's not really an right. assumption that we're pulling from who knows where um, uh, and, and, and uh, suggest and recommending that the ones that we are sort of suggesting um, on our own that are not coming from a report. I think we want to have some rationale Sure. Uh, for, for that, for those assumptions. Sure. And I think that it's important to have this as a sort of appendix somewhere. But if you want a one pager to give out to the public, you want to put your conclusions in that little paragraph, you know, and even maybe maybe even make it up front. That well, the one pager, I don't think I, I don't think we want to. Um, or Or have would have reasonable space to. Uh, give a lot of citations and and, no. and yeah, Dwayne, Dwayne, let's hold that talk. Yeah. We're agreeing. We're agreeing on yeah. that. Okay, good. Right. Uh, we have three more people uh, who have comments. So Don, Jesse, and then Steve. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Dwayne. I mean, I'm I'm finding this really, really helpful. Um, one of the things I'm I'm thinking though, is especially with request with respect to method one, unless I'm missing something here, is there is there a way that we can transpose some of the percentages <clears throat> in method three um, to method one. Like, what percentage of Amherst solar capacity is assumed to be ground mounted? Because I think that would dovetail into the siting issues and the bylaw issues that you're talking about. Um, you know, if we're dealing, if we take method one and say, this is what we need, you know, to meet our electrical needs, somehow or other, I think for the general public, there has to be some understanding given Amherst, what percentage of that would be ground mounted solar? 
And I, I don't know how you do that, but that's, you know, to me, that would be enlightening. Yeah, I think, and if, if I sort of gave a, I wanted to give a census on that, that, you know, 70% currently is coming from ground mounted, even though it's in four projects. Mm -hmm. um, but, but to your point, Don, at least the way I'm looking at it is that this is, is kind of neutral or blind to that. Uh, and that this is where, um, I'm not sure about ultimately, but at some point, um, this analysis and the solar technical assessment um, intersect each other. Uh, and so when we get the solar technical assessment and the assessment shows, and this is just completely made up, um, that, you know, we have, um, uh, you know, ex uh, you know, reasonable, ex reasonable siting opportunities for building mounted solar, meaning residential, uh, and maybe even parking lots and so forth. That's limited to maybe an additional 10 megawatts. And I'm just making that number up. Um, then it gives us some sense. Okay. Um, uh, or maybe it's 20 or 30, who knows, but then, uh, and, you know, to the extent that that um, that's at least technically feasible, um, that there's some suggestion that then, OK, so we should we should try to make as much use of that as possible. Uh, but to the extent that there's a, 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 a gap, uh, which I suspect there will be um, with regard to what we think our fair share is, um, then uh, then then. Um, um, we'd have to look at the ground, you know, the the, the uh, ground mounted of very various uh, um, uh, forms of ground mounted solar. Okay. Um, and, and you know, it also comes into issues of uh, you know how much more costly is it uh, um, to put on roofs and so forth, and decisions that have to be made, or or at least um, um, you know we're not making decisions about a specific projects, but just collectively um, thoughts in terms of what's the best path forward for Amherst. Thanks. All right, I'd be interested in any other people's thoughts on that for sure. Jesse, Steve and Andra for closing comments and then we'll wrap it up. Um, yeah, I think I'm just, Thinking about this is like this, all this information is kind of going to two places. Um, one place is kind of feeding back into the bylaw working group and the consultants and some of this more what Stephanie I think called academic. And then the other, and, and that's refining ideas. The other place is, is at some point, I think we try to give the general public a rough order of magnitude. And so the methodology seems almost irrelevant to me. And the infograph, and because it's good, it's good work. And, and we can we can put a link on an infographic. That if anyone wants to dig in and challenge us, here's here we sh we're showing our work, but really like some kind of infographic, maybe it's a bar chart, maybe it's a map, of Amherst where we graphically show what how much we have and how much we need and it's very simple and it's a gut check and it's an order of magazine it doesn't say we're putting it all on roofs it doesn't say we're putting it on cars or alpacas or forests it's this is how much and it's a freaking ton and and let those that let that information ripple out. Let's start that conversation going. Let's reach out to the people we think are going to hate that the most and have a productive conversation with them. How much we have, how much we need. Steve? Yeah, I'm all set. I'll, I'll pass. I, uh, my questions were addressed. Oh, just just to <clears throat> respond to Jesse, which I, I thought were good points, and I I think I got a gist of that infographic, but we'll work on that. But <clears throat> uh, but I do want to stress that this is not an exercise of precision at all. Uh, it's an exercise of scaling and and just appreciating the scale. Wow. Not only is it there's too many assumptions for precision, uh, but also we're talking about 2050, uh, and you know who knows what the world will look like in 2040. 
uh, in terms of uh, solar progress and other technologies and so forth. But um, this is this is uh, meant to be a, um, uh, a, a sort of um, scaling exercise more so than precision. Actually, and if I could add that, I was going to make that point too. This, all of this is predicated on what the Massachusetts plan is. We are just kind of translating that down into the township of Amherst. Uh, and that state plan may change. So, and that, if it does, then the Amherst plan can change. So this will not get carved in stone and be the absolute target we must do by 2050. Um, it'll be a target that will become a moving target. And, um, might change in the future. We might want to make a recommendation on one hand for 2030 and 2050 instead of just making a recommendation for 2050. Am I, am I next? Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. I was going to, yeah, waiting for Vasu, but go ahead, Andra. I'll call and you. Vasu turned into a Martian again. Um, <laughs> along the lines of what Laura was suggesting, I think we might be able to get rid of population as a um, criteria. It's problematic because we have so many students, we're not including the land mass or the um, use of the university and colleges. So why would we include all the students in population? And population isn't about sighting. So, you know, it, it's a, it's a, I want to consider that together. Dwayne, does the value go up if the population percent goes up? Is that what your calculation says there? Um, no, these, these two cells here, the, and these come from uh, these data assumptions about our population in Amherst compared to the Commonwealth and our square f acreage compared to the Commonwealth coming to these two things. I truthfully, I have a note in here um, where I'm actually not, I need to verify whether this populate this population, which is uh, 39,000 um, and comes from this census here. Um, I, I, I don't know if that includes students um, or oh, doesn't it does. include. It does. Yeah, Duane, I was just asking um, your math there. If you but the math, that the math, one percent, the math does not include either of these. Oh, it does uh, not. Okay. Uh, so these are there for um, for thought provoking and to be able to set these two. Uh, so uh, you know the user inputs uh, what Amherst portion is. You know my sense is look at these and you know by land area it's uh, it's point uh, two eight, by population it's point five five. So I, I don't know which one to choose, but let's choose uh, something that you know scans those oh, or right. is appropriate to those. So the calculation. And the math doesn't actually include those those cells. It just well, uh, it does. The the low and the high are the land area versus the population. Um. Yeah, one way to look at it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. Uh, but, I mean, yeah. close. Maybe not. Exactly. Yeah. And and to answer Vasu's question, if the pop if you increase the population, yeah, then then the solar capacity needed goes up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's basic sense. assumption. People use energy. So the more yeah. people you have in a given district, the more energy gets used. I mean, the other way maybe to uh look at it, yeah, might be we know we know the Amherst electric load. Uh we also can find the uh Commonwealth electric load. Uh and maybe that's another way to look at it. Um, because we do know this this uh electric load is specifically not inclusive of the universities. Uh, so, yeah. so Duane, I guess here's oh, my recommendation. At the end of the day, this is a recommendation that we're making to the town manager and we're using the workshop forum to educate the community. I don't think they need to get into details. I think we can continue to fine tune this if we don't like the population method too. 
we can come back and change it. I don't think we're going to make a big, I mean, it's not going to make a big impact in terms of what we're going to do in the near term. In the long term, things could change. So I would say, I think someone mentioned this too. I mean, for the town manager and for the community, we just need a one pager. And what is the recommendation? Is it a minimum of 24 megawatts that the town needs? What does that equate to into an understandable language for the community? And then with a caveat that we're gonna to continue to fine tune this based on the solar assessment, based on additional information that we get around what other communities are doing or whatever else. I think it's, I think it's okay to leave it as is and continue to think through this in the future and make changes. Yeah, I would just say that I, absolutely we need a one pager to um, provide to the to the um, town um, forums and so forth. Um, I have no doubt um, that there are a subset of individuals in Amherst that want to know how we came out with that and would want to dig into this into the the bowels of the spreadsheet. Uh, so you know, I I do want to have a spreadsheet that's available uh, for for uh, those folks who want to um, to uh, to play around with and 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 with documentation of of uh, where where the numbers are coming from. That would make sense. Like an appendix, like I think Lori mentioned that. Uh, Lori. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to second the idea that the population number should be struck, and I like the idea of replacing instead a percent of the energy usage minus, of course, the um, universities, not, not including the universities. And then I think this is clean. Then I think none of these numbers include the university in any sort of a um, confusing, confusing way. Yeah, um, unless, unless we have, and I um, look to Stephanie maybe, but is there an official population of Amherst that's not inclusive of the university? Yeah. No, because the students vote, so I don't think that's possible. No, I, no. I, when we have our population demographics, it includes students. And I'm, I'm kind of uh, would would suggest we include students that live off campus and yeah. reside in our in our homes. But is it inclusive of students in dormitories? It depends where they've registered to vote. Exactly. Oh, is that what it is? Is that what it is? Okay, then that's hard. Yeah, that's hard. Mm -hmm. No, that's not what the census is. The census yeah. is where you're residing right now as we're talking. Right. That's I mean, true. I'm a student for the fact. Yeah. I this think it's like it's a college town, you know, everything's like very blurry. <laughs> yeah, and when you think but, about future is the problem. Sorry. The, prob the problem isn't including the students. The problem is including the students and not including the contribution to the electric grid of the universities. That's the problem. Well, is it though for off-campus students? Not for off-campus, but I don't right. think there's an easy way to get that difference, right? right? I mean, it's either population right. of Amherst or not. So uh, some students register to vote here or, or when they respond to a census, they might suggest they live in Amherst, even if they live in a dorm uh, and others give their hometown maybe. Well, the, so it's yeah. hard to hard to get a good number. Okay. Yeah, and I guess the question is, is fair share really based on population or should it be more on average income, median income? <laughs> Would that be a better approach? And yeah, I, I don't know if you have some data around that, uh, Dwayne, and because I'm looking at the range, right? The range of data on method two and three, that's a lot of variation there versus method one. Yeah. It's it's data that's available, it's easier to calculate. And, and so you projected it out into 2050. Yeah. And, and, and then going back to what Lori was saying is maybe if we can fine tune our method correctly in methods two and three, possibly talk through what they could be, those numbers might change. And then we can use the minimum of whatever. Um, yeah, I, of I don't want to suggest to anybody, and particularly those in, on the public uh, listening in, that these numbers are are at all what we're going to come out with, come out with as as ECAC recommendations, because we we still need to review those. Yep. Uh, Stephanie. So um, I just want to reiterate because I've heard this come up a couple of times during this conversation that the town manager will vote or adopt or have final, you know, um, we'll look at these numbers and sort of say these are the numbers. 
I, I think what you're doing is making a recommendation and providing the town with knowledge and information that it needs to make its, you know, to sort of work towards its goals. So their goals, but they're not going to necessarily, there's not going to be an official like adoption. You're basically giving the town the information that it needs to move towards its goals, right? So it's right. like a clear, like, this is the goal line, you know, and this is how, you know, this is what we've got to work towards. Um, and try to achieve so but it's not again it's not them voting on it do you do you know what i mean I'm, i guess there's a it's a fine line but i want to be clear that it's not like you're going to give it to them and they're going to say yes you know we are voting on this today and and, just, and and stephanie we can continue to fine tune and give an updated version yeah exactly it. because it's something that like steve and yeah. everybody has pointed out along the way things are going to numbers are going to change you know technology is going to change and who knows what's going to be on the horizon in 10 years from now. So I just want to be clear about that. So, so it doesn't keep coming up. Yeah. Makes sense. Thanks, Stephanie. Laura. And then Jesse. Yeah. So, so I actually think this could be a much simpler discussion for the sake of just the bylaw. So that's our most pressing issue, right? The bylaw needs to be developed. What we don't want to happen is for the bylaw to limit land use so much that we can't meet our goals. So I think what we need to say, it, what we need to come out with is what is, our recommendation should be, this is the amount of megawatts this is the minimum amount of megawatts that we need to make sure our bylaw supports. That does not mean we are going to site solar in all those places, right? We're not suggesting that we site 180 megawatts worth of solar. But if the state level plan says that there's a possibility that we're going to need 100,000 acres of land-based solar and Amherst share of that is X percent, then we can't have a bylaw that that limits, we should not have a bylaw that limits the amount of solar less than that. That number from the state already includes population growth. It already includes all of the other energy use growth. It already includes all of the other factors that we're talking about, rooftop deployment, hydro, everything. So we, so, so we don't need to worry about that yet in this particular discussion. What we need to say to the bylaw group is that we can't, as ECAC, we can't support a bylaw that limits land use to numbers. Sorry, my <laughs> chat here is getting in the picture. Um, that supports numbers that won't allow us what that don't support the state meeting their goals because the state if the state doesn't meet our, their goals we're not going to meet our goals full stop right so i i can take a stab at writing that up but i think that's the first question then i think there's separate discussion about a lot of other things like what is what should we be doing for all these other areas what should be our what should we be trying to support for land? But for the case of the bylaw, we just can't have the bylaw say, okay, here's 10 acres to play with <laughs> when we know we're gonna need way more than that, right? Just as you're saying there, Laura, um I guess I'm wondering, uh, and I'm sort of thinking that uh in this method three, um recognizing that these two is these two this assumption in terms of the percentage of solar capacity that is um, assumed to be ground mounted is really a a pretty wild guess um that i should remove that um and and uh but differentiate this method three as just being a suggestion of what the ground mounted uh array capacity might be be in Amherst to do our fair share, if you will, and have that, um, sorry, in, in this graph and maybe a different, a, a clear bar here that just says, you know, ground mounted, ground mounted portion. Um, 
because uh, uh, um, that might, because I think th that's, imp as you state, Laura, I mean, this, this projection by the state is pretty useful uh, and helpful for us in terms of the, the, the uh, bylaw uh, work um, and that um, that might be more informative um, as, a, as a somewhat of a standalone yeah. method uh, just for ground mounted uh, for the bylaw and for everybody. Right, and just keep it as an orange. Now I get it. Thanks, thanks, Dwayne. Yeah, 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 we'll have two apples and an orange. Yeah. Yeah. Jesse? Does it, does it make sense to not use the word recommendation at all? This is an analysis. This is an analysis that says, this is what the state says. We did an analysis. We looked at it three different ways. And if you average it all out, it's 100 megawatts. Because at some point, we got to get to one or two or, God forbid, three numbers that we're putting up there in front of everyone. <laughs> and, and I think... So, so I think to me, the next step in my mind, and, and again, everything that everyone's saying is seems extremely valuable. I just trust you on the back end of this. <laughs> so I'm moving quickly to the to the front end. And so the analysis that I'm curious about is like, how do we take all these numbers and and whittle it down? And what's the right number to show the results of our analysis? Or I'm not going to take credit for it. Dwayne's analysis. <laughs> Um, so it could be, you know, different ways people do this. And we do this all the time with buildings, with budgets. Sometimes we lop off the high and the low and give that as a range. Sometimes we take the average and then expand it and give that a range. I think we can kind of do whatever we want with that range. It could be 75 to 125 megawatts. Personally, I'm comfortable with anything as long as it meets Laura's criteria that we don't accidentally go too low. And I also like Dwayne's idea that it'd be a range. But if, if we can agree on that some kind of range that can then feed into a simple summary, that feels very valuable. Sorry. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I didn't unmute fast enough. I just wanted to agree that we should put down a number or a range. And I have no objection to just taking the average of the top four numbers not the bottom, well, with a couple of changes, right? There needs to be the change in the second one to energy usage from population percent and leaving out the third one, um, you know, just taking some sort of, a, of an average of uh, the first four numbers. That would be my, um, that would be one way to do it. And I would be perfectly happy with that. And then if you want to put error bars or uncertainty or a range on it, that's fine with me too. Um, I think what we need to do is just finalize these numbers and then, you know, have a, Someone have someone propose something and then see if we can agree on it. Um, I think that would be fine. So that we have that simple, this is our recommendation. This is what we think will be enough to get us through 2050. Yeah, average or a common range between the three methods, right? 63 to 92, whatever works. Like, so I, I guess what I heard was, Laura, you wanna, you're gonna work with Dwayne and come up with a one pager figure out what the recommendation would be between Dwayne and um, Laura, whether it's an average or a range. I think we agreed on range would be a better way to go approach this. Would that make sense? And then for the next meeting, Dwayne, you'll propose that one, you'll share that one pager with us. Do we want, just want to do that? Um, that sounds good to me. Um, um, I mean, I, I, if we're talking about two weeks from now, um, I think I could focus on, on, um, getting the, the spreadsheet up to snuff and some graphics out that we might plop onto a one pager. Um, uh, I'm not sure if I'd have time to sort of put that one pager together, but happy to work with Laura or anybody else. Um, Jesse can throw in his, um, infographic. Uh, idea to 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 um, help us as well. Yeah, Dwayne, we do have the education series next. Yeah, the yeah. Next meeting, so I wonder if it makes sense for you to share and Laura to share information. Uh, maybe sometime next week, end of next week. So, 
ECAC can review it before the meeting and give feedback and it's we can take a vote on it or just a quick yes, no, if everybody agrees with the methodology and the approach we're going to take. Well, not the methodology, everybody agrees with the methodology, that but that one pager. Would, would that work, Dwayne, if by next Friday, if you can share with everybody? Yeah, I'll send something to Dwayne. I Right, and then we'll go from there. Yeah. Thank you. Great, thank you. All right. Thanks, Dwayne. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. All right, uh, this should be quick, right? Lori, I'll talk about the sustainability festival. Yeah, I just wanted to get input. I'm starting from a blank slate here. I haven't done this before. So how has ECAC done this in the past? And what ideas do you guys have for an ECAC booth at the sustainability festival coming up in April? Steve? Can I just give you some quick background that ECAC Please. didn't have a booth? <laughs> so ah, okay. and we've been in we've been in a pandemic. So um, we haven't had the festival in a few years. So basically, you're just starting from a clean slate. Everybody is. So okay, there you go. then ideas. When we did the block party last year or in the fall, what I found was useful was telling people about the Mass Save program. And unless there's good, Mass Save is already going to have a presence at the sustainability festival, I think it would be helpful if we kind of took on the role of having maybe little handouts or information that people can photograph or take with them about the Mass Save program, promote that and maybe pr and promote heat pumps as you've been working on, Lori. Maybe there'd be some one pager that, again, have some handouts, but people can also take pictures of, of things that we have available for phone. Yeah, and phone. let's not forget Pace, yeah. right? Because they're going to be businesses. Yes. Yeah. yeah, Pace is uh, probably a more targeted or smaller audience than the general yeah, right. right. Um, so the pace, but, but we can have the pace flyer there. We have the pace yeah. flyer there. I'll make up a heat pump flyer. I'll also have links or little. I'll try to get cards or a packet from places like Green Consumer Alliance. And are they going to be there? Who's who's going to be there? Um, oh, I don't have a final list. It takes a while for that to all come together. But usually, um, we try to get CET there, and they're a Mass Save provider, so right. they will be the kind of official Mass Save. Uh, um, sponsor if they're there, but that doesn't mean you can't have some information or direct people. I mean, there's a lot of cross reference from different vendors that are there that day, so that's fine. But you wouldn't you wouldn't be sort of the official ones handing out that information. But feel free. Okay, so you're gonna. You, I know I'm on this mailing list for this event. Uh, will you keep us updated as to who's going to be there? As you know, I will check in with you separately, but um, okay. If I know, but I mean, I think I have to know what you're trying to look for. I mean, there's, in the past, we've had a hundred vendors. I don't know what the final <laughs> count will be this year. So, okay. you know, there's a lot of people and it's it's not just information, it's craft vendors, there's entertainers, there's, you know, a lot of folks. So we can touch base separately on that. Yeah, and yeah. I think that anything that has to do with energy conversion or, or you know, specifically, I think energy and electric cars, right? Um, conversion away from fossil fuels. I think um, you all should just focus on what information you want to provide to Amherst residents. Carp, and I wouldn't about worry carp. about other people being there already and representing that. Your okay. people are going to stop to see you specifically for different reasons. So I think you just present them with the information that you think they should have. Yeah, Lori, last time we printed a sheet of paper and then we had a barcode where they could scan in and it'll direct them to um, the Mass A website and we'll talk. We talked about it. If you want to send me that so I can. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I will. Yeah. Great. Uh, Jesse. Yeah, the, I think I want to just, the, one of the Vasu's goal um, to have more people come to these meetings. I see we've got six people here and there's even a hand up. Um, really, I think finding a way to like, connect with people and and in some ways given that there's going to be so much other stuff happening i wonder if simplifying our message a little bit of like you know ask us what we're doing tell us what you want us to be doing that kind of thing really oh, yeah. listening like we'll make a lot of room for a lot of listening sort of like really build it as that um have notebooks take notes and be able to to absorb as much of what people want um that's that's my thinking there. Um, 
how about a big uh, mural board or something that people can write on and put their ideas on and just sort of some colored pens and stuff like that? Yeah, that's what we did last time. I, I, Jesse, did you, you took pictures, right? Did, and I distributed okay. them to the group. Yeah, if you, okay. Let me see if I can dig it up. I'll, I'll send it over to Lori. Great. Uh, Stephanie? Sorry, I meant to lower that. And uh, I actually went to the library over the weekend. I talked to Linda. I don't know her name. I don't know her last name. And um, she said she's going to help us have like books that are climate themed. Uh, they'll also be open during the day. So between 10 to 4 p.m., the library is going to be open and they're going to display some books. And then I also got in touch with Amherst Cinema, uh, playing climate theme movies potentially on that day or over the weekend. Um, I'm still waiting to hear back. I heard you know, we exchanged uh, communications once, but um, I didn't get a response yet on whether they're okay. Um, That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, and then the third thing I was thinking about is um, work with businesses, and this might be a hard bet, um, and turn off the lights for an hour um, after sunset, um, if that's possible, just for an hour, just candle, um, you know, candles uh, to light up the restaurants because um, it's Earth Day, mm. Earth Hour, reduce energy sort of theme. Um, I think that'll be a little bit more challenging to do. I don't know about that. If we have a fire, it'll be a big problem. <laughs> yeah. Not, you can't turn the lights off. You know, yeah, I think that's a bad idea. So there's mm. a pause against that. Oh, yeah. A lawyer would say, do not do that. If <laughs> not do that. Okay. Architects okay. does this thing. <laughs> Lots of folks have trouble seeing as it is with the lighting and then you turn the lights off and they'll have even more trouble. Uh, All right. But the other and stuff the other I really like. It's can great. I can I jump in real quick? I, I just want to advise you to keep focused and keep it simple. If you're doing too many things, it's going to be too much, and you're going to get too overwhelmed. I mean, there's already a lot going on anyway. So I would say focus on a thing. You know, find a thing yeah. to I think sort just, of just promote ECAC and what ECAC is doing, and maybe some sort of a little flyer about the CARP just to let people know there's this plan um some flyers and i think yeah I, just keeping it simple and getting input from people sounds like a good idea laura and Dwayne. yeah i just want to flag for folks um that it is the tail end of vac april vacation week um so i to agree completely with stephanie and we should also just make sure who's going to be like i don't think i'll be around so um, and there may be others who may not be around either. So just wanted to flag that. Dwayne? Yep, yeah, uh, just something came in my head uh, for the for the um, sustainability fair. I mean, one thing we could offer uh, to get to Vasu's goal of getting more public participation in our meetings is um, a flyer or QR code or whatever it's called um for folks to um get right to our website of of our meeting times and so forth uh but also maybe um offer that the meet the meeting following earth day will be dedicated to a, a public input um and just uh have an open meeting uh for folks that came by um and and uh told their friends and wanted to put something uh, forward to us that's a great idea Listening session. Yeah, listening session. Okay, anything else? Okay. No, thanks, everybody. That's great. Appreciate it. Lori, I'll also send you a link. Um, the town of Winchester had a climate solutions week. I don't want it to be complicated. Just take a look at their website and see what they did. If there are ideas that are beneficial that we want to take on, um, okay. I'll just send it over to you. Thanks. Yep. Actually, I see a chat. The chat box opens, Stephanie. I don't know if I can host it there. Okay. No. 
No, you shouldn't be using right. the chat box. Sorry. Okay. Um, okay, staff updates. Um, very quickly, I guess. Um, so I've met with Lori. We um, are sort of fine tuning the RFP for the um, for heat pump vendor or consultant. I'm sorry. So um, we're looking, you know, to sort of wrap that up. Um, also moving forward with the um, fleet inventory for greenhouse gas emissions analysis. That you know, again, these things seem like simple requests, but when we go to get the data, the data isn't the same in the various databases. And so um, we're, you know, we're having to sort of piecemeal together or put things in um, retroactively to sort of bring it up to speed to get us all the information that we need. So it's taking time, but I think we're going to get there sooner than later. So that's kind of exciting that we're finally moving that forward as well. Um, so those were sort of two big things. The um, RFPs went in for fellows for the summer programming. So um, I think those have been advertised now on the UNH Sustainability Institute website. I can send you all the information so that if you can kind of get it out to your networks, especially those of you with institutional links to college students, both at the um, undergrad and grad level, there for there's opportunities for both. So I would really encourage you to please help spread the word on that. So I'll forward that separately after this meeting. Um, those are kind of the bigger things. Um, also, we did, I think I did tell you that we met with um, Kim Lundgren from Kim Lundgren Associates, who has the community dashboard um, tool. And so we have met with them, got a quote, and we'll be probably moving that forward. Although I'm realizing that, you know, I want to have substantial information to to sort of post <laughs> so um you know as we move some of these things forward like when we have the um the cca website up and running when we have the um solar assessment or the community survey information which is you know in another month so i would say like in another month or two would be a more appropriate time for that to sort of move forward not like tomorrow it doesn't quite make sense right now i think we have more that we want to be promoting so i want to sort of build it with them with actual programming in place um or soon to be programming in place so those are the very quick updates because i know you've got public comment and i don't want to take away too much from that Thanks, Stephanie. Uh, any CAC member updates? Steve. I just am excited to report I installed a heat pump water heater uh, last month. And first partial month of use, I'm learning that I'm paying about a dollar twenty a day for hot water heating right now with the heat pump heater, uh, as opposed to probably a little over two dollars when I was heating with fuel oil. So that's a substantial savings. The heat pump was water heater was not cheap, but I had a substantial Eversource supported discount at the cash register and an additional discount on my taxes. So it came down the price of the new heat pump tank was comparable to a standard electric tank. And it's a pretty simple installation, um, pretty easy to swap an electric, a standard electric for a heat pump water tank. So um, I'm pretty excited. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> this is one other thing that we can also talk about, right? During the festival, people who have installed heat pumps or whatever, right? And mm. that could be a conversation. I've got so many charts and graphs. I'll bring them. I'll, I'll have a huge <laughs> charging data display showing my heat pump um, working. <laughs> oh, I got an idea. So we can have whoever's there can have a sign that say, "Ask me about you know heat pump." Mm. Uh, right. If you've put one in or ask me about uh, uh, heat pumps for heating or ask me about uh, an EV, you know, right. <laughs> people who've done this, if you've done it already, we'll have a few signs that you can put on the table in front of you. At some point, I have to ask for who is going to be there and who can help staff the table, but we can do that another time, I think. Just write yeah. that in, you know, think about your availability. Yep. I'll be there, but I'll be heavily jet lagged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, for. The next meeting, we're going to have our education series on transportation. We're going to have that one pager discussion on the solar calculations. Dwayne, you have that. Um, do we have an action on PACE, Don, that we can talk about? Well, we'll have the PACE flyer. The, oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. 
So we have the pace flyer that we're going to discuss. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Am I missing anything? Okay. Anything on heat pumps, Laurie? I don't think so. What about the discussion, or is that going to wait, um, Andra and Stephanie, about um, the new specialized code? Oh, that's because that was oh, we were supposed to watch for that. Right? We have to talk about that too. A good point. Yeah. Jesse was going to talk about that. Yeah, correct. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Let's open it up to the public for comments. Julian has had his hand up for some time, so I'm going to. Oh. Uh -oh. Hmm. Okay. Sorry, Julian. Julian, I've just allowed you to speak. Did you have a question? Hi. Yes. Thank you, Stephanie. Um. I was just going to say that on behalf of the Public Shade Tree Committee, we're also going to be working and doing some outreach at the Sustainability Festival. So we wanted to see if there's any way we could partner with you or work with you guys to make that event uh, go. Yeah, you're an official partner for that event, so we can talk offline. Okay, perfect. Sounds good. Um, and my other question was about the heat pump programs just expanding sort of who knows about it. Uh, we looked into it for my house and um, turns out a lot of my neighbors just didn't know about it. So I really do like the idea of expanding that. Thank you. Thanks, Julian. Thanks for joining. Any other questions? Okay, looks like that's all we have the time for. Thank you, everybody, for dialing in. Thanks, Vasu. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Thanks, Vasu. Vasu. Bye. Bye, all. Bye. Bye-bye.